Alrighty. Happy Storage Day to you, everybody. As you may recall, I've changed the names of the days of the week to be more suitable for the way I live my life and run my games and such like. And so, Mondays are fun days, Tuesdays are news days, Wednesdays are friends days, Thursdays are storage days, and then Fridays are my day. At any rate, <clears throat> and of course Saturdays are what matter to me. Today, we are going to talk about telling a long tale. tale. And what I mean by that is many game masters are so attuned to product releases and staying within story theming and staying within a property that they run adventures as written and while there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that as a matter of fact it's a great way when you're early on and learning the mechanisms to kind of direct yourself through the story nonetheless the idea of telling a story that goes on week over week month after month year after year or in my case decade after decade really does take a, a, a different way of thinking and so today we're going to talk about the kind of elements you might want to pursue in telling your long tale. Now I do have a, sort of a cheat sheet of sorts here that I'm going to be using so if I look away to the side screens because I'm looking at the actual uh, notes that I put together for this but when you're telling a tale that is long in nature you kind of have to figure out what Kind of a story you want to tell and sure there are a lot of things that you can do to manage that storytelling structure but what you really want to do is try to figure out what mechanism you're going to use for telling that tale and some of them are absolutely logical rational, coherent, doesn't take a lot of thought process to develop, but others, um, you're actually gathering information from the players as they play to build your element of story and decide how you want to lead that future toward them and lead them toward that future. So, let me get to my notes page I should have had this up before but <clears throat> somehow it ended up not being the page that I turned to so that you might want to figure that so let me see here uh, at any rate uh, just to give um, context for those of you that may this may be your first time tuning in I'm Jonathan Alvin and I've been a storyteller for 50 years non-stop I started playing when I was 11, and I was a game master the very next week, and I've been telling stories literally nonstop, an average of one session a week for 50 years. So when we are talking about the idea of... We'll go here. So the idea is, do you tell, do you tell a story? I mean, I could go from the simplest to the most difficult, but I think that a probably better way to do this is to just cedar the pants it and kind of hit all of the different categories one after the other with no real sense of structure. So. I apologize if this is a little, dis, little more disorganized than normal. All right. So in telling stories, the first concept of telling the story is the hero's journey. And that is you start with your post persona at a relatively early period in their development. And then week over week, you add pieces to the story of their advancement, whether it be you pursue the idea of their... Uh, their strength in the story, their intelligence, their wisdom, what, whatever attributes you want to build, you give them ways to progress down that path. 
it may be, for example, testing their virtue, testing their tenacity, testing their worth, testing their understanding, and so on. But by incrementally moving them towards their final position, their final retirement point in the story, you're able to give the player an overview that describes that person. And if you're playing a small group, two to three to four players, that, that can work. What ends up happening often, though, is you end up focusing on one player over the others or targeting the focus of attention on the one that you're trying to develop and giving short, short shrift, so to speak, to the other players. And that's really kind of an unfortunate course. So I guess the first thing that I'll say in telling a long tale is that you want to start by deciding a separate course for each player at the table so that the advancement is coherent and that the justification for moving from one, one player to another during the story, again, makes sense. You're actually meeting the players right where they are and moving them step by step towards their objective. But that doesn't have to be the same path. So you could, for example, have a younger player who hasn't role played as much, who you're actually put on that hero's path, and their advancement is down that course. But look, let's look at some of the other possible stories you might be telling in the long form so that we can look at how you might intersperse each of these story types across your players and therefore make the feel of it more unique to the individual and more customized, if you will, to that player as well. So a second story can be a story of discovery. That is to say the player starts out adequately furnished, adequately aware of their skills, competent in their actions, but there's one or many mysteries that that person does, hasn't yet discovered. Now, this is really popular in the video games market because that way they can provide you with a character that you built to your specifications, but that the story leaves you with holes in the memory of that persona or the lore of that persona. And therefore, as you're moving along through the story, Easter eggs become apparent or uh, are discovered that answer the question of what is particularly um, well, oh, that's, that's interesting. My camera strikes in a different direction. I was wondering what that, what it was seeing. There's something that it's seeing in the corner of the screen that I couldn't. Okay. So if you're on this mystery path, then all you need to do is stack up the mysteries in ascending order of importance or in uh, perhaps less than that for a more more sophisticated player so that you get the adequate rises and falls in the story for that persona as you go along. If you merge that with a hero story for a younger persona, then the mysteries can be tied to the different advances of the secondary character without them being secondary. They, they just have a different path. Uh, a third progressive path that one, one could take is the uh, chapterized version and that is the story itself without the players in it would be stepping along a course and perhaps the player has a desire to fill the arc of that individual chapter and so therefore you have the staccato rhythmic movement of your new player picking up advances and, and steadily moving towards his objective as a drumbeat so to speak then you have the mystery section as a, mer a uh, motive driver. So it's pushing the story along towards its objective. But then you can chapterize and therefore create the rises and falls in a more rhythmic pattern. You know, having the players move from location one to location two at periodic in intervals. This leads the that third player, therefore, to be satisfying himself by completing the 
the internally short story that moves on to the next short story, but each one of those then is stepped upward along the mystery path and therefore, I mean, up and up the advancement path, but then it could have rises and falls following the mystery path. And that might be the justification or motive for the moving of the chapter locations. This is particularly good for those players that are wanting to build a story for their persona, want to see the, the, their, their, their advancement as part of a bigger picture of the world. Um, another one of these could be simply a, uh, a hunt. The idea is that a persona comes into the world with the idea of hunting a specific thing, and therefore you thread that being's course along the tops of your chapter headings and whatever, so that you have this entire flowing package moving, and you can add increased pacing for the hunt, you can slow things down, maybe put some uh, some literal uh, red herrings in the way of the hunter to make sure that he's pursuing his objective, but you're still able to keep the rest of the group on its kind of staccato advancement. A final, well, not final, but yet another process can be one of uh, player-driven awareness. I have had several different times where the adventuring group, and maybe, maybe just one individual, but collectively they also might be doing this, and that is that they are searching for their own solutions to problems that you have devised so that they're not following a set path, but they are determining what course they should lay to go to accomplish all of these. And then in addition to these, you also have the travelogue, the idea that the story literally is an extended version of around the world in X number of days. The idea is they're exploring, discovering, logging, tracking, monitoring the status of the world as they move. And what's really nice is that once you have this understanding that the players can choose their own course, and can determine their own path, they will help you decide which of the drivers really suits them the best. The concept of the travelogue adventure, the idea of going from, from location A to location B to location C, is really useful if you have a lot of different, I, I, you can call them tropes, you can call them mini stories, you can call them one shots, and you're trying to link them together. If you're doing it in a travelogue fashion, then they're spreading your adventure pathway across the much wider expanse of whatever your game world is. And each of those progressive steps can be, again, stepped into a, the staccato rhythm of an advancing character on top of the mister, mysterious winding path, and then merge that with your chapterized path. And by doing each of the separate chapters within the sequence, the location, and then rotating that location to another one, gives you a chance to ratchet the adventure, ratchet the intensity as necessary for each of the player groups. Now, <clears throat> what's really funny is that I'm speaking to this now in, in, in terms of how a character works, but in reality, the team, the adventuring group gathered together becomes in effect for you, the storyteller, to be a single entity because you know which story arcs you've placed them on or which which processes you're using. And thereby, if you get the opportunity, as I have, to run six, seven, eight, nine, multiple sessions a week, each of the stories can be fresh and new because I'm gauging them not to the individual players of the group, but instead to the group as a whole, and then determining what the whole wants to do, and then moving the whole along a, if you will, a stepped up version of exactly what I'm talking about, that I do have a group that just travelogues. They, the players can't stand to stay in the same location for any period of time, and so they are constantly moving from location to location. Now each location can be one week, three weeks, ten weeks, three months. It, it all depends on what the players choose to do while they're in those locales. 
but the process for driving them is the part that I'm saying you, you can define for. With each one of these, of course, come, come some perils. If you are doing the advancement protocols and all of your players are fundamentally newbies, there's going to be a lot of weeks at the beginning where it's going to be rather risky. The players have a lot of potential for misunderstanding, mis uh, misassociation, uh, thinking themselves more powerful than they are, and so on. So, so that the initial process for new players, especially in traditional role-playing games, and I'm going to draw the line there because in, the, in terms of Nikos RPG, which is this logo, uh, in the case of Nikos RPG, beginning or moderate or very sophisticated characters don't really run any of the traditional risks because they still have the opportunities to overcome those difficulties by working together and combining their resources. And it's not that the game doesn't have its threats, doesn't have its dangers, they just tend to be more intentional than perhaps they would be if it was in another game system. But it certainly doesn't have the risks that a low level group of characters do being put in a world where there are some high level dangers. By having a system that doesn't have a leveling system, the very mechanism itself will recommend to the players perhaps that they shouldn't pursue a certain villain at a certain time. But the, the real key to the long tail story is for you as the game master to hold on to what it is you're trying to accomplish. And to some, that's the perhaps the biggest argument about being a game master is deciding whether or not you have uh, the staying power. If you are in a role play group and your group is not focused uh, and you are not focused on where, where you're taking them week over week, uh, players tend to be able to draw themselves into uh, confusion and sometimes despair because they, they literally feel like they've lost the ball and aren't pursuing something. So the trick is for you as the game master to realize what it is that you're trying to guide them to. Now, those of you that are sandbox game masters, if your real purpose is to let the players make the choices, you have to at least provide them with variables that they can choose chase. If you are playing characters, if you're putting characters into a world wherein they are all newbies, they are all novices, and you give them no guidance. Pardon me, look what that was. They have the uh, tendency to chase dangerous things because they don't know any different, especially early on when you have players that are coming into it, as we've talked about before, the concept of the reason why people play and the means by which they play are radically different. So if they come in with a you only live once attitude and a disregard for story and an emphasis on what is it that, I, that is possible for me to do and I want to do all of them, you are setting yourself up for difficult times in keeping the story going. I have known game masters who start down the path of wanting, claiming, and desiring the idea of being a, a sandbox game master, but within one or two weeks they are doing more nose pulling and railroading than even the most ardent rolled, uh, road, uh, railroader because the railroaders at least have the idea of the staccato motion and the rhythm motion of the train, so to speak, and can make it feel more accessible, more something that they can pursue. Whereas if you have put them in that sandbox, they literally don't know what to push off against. They don't know where their feet are in the sand. They 
fall down a lot. Now, some would argue that's, that's the path you would want to take them on, but the, my recommendation is by having these other story elements, even if you're not enforcing them, but instead you are simply aware of them, then you can certainly, as, uh, as some would say, you could certainly urge them to move in a certain direction. You don't have to give commands, but at least you have an idea of saying, hey, you know, you were wanting to progress in your horseback skills. Maybe you guys want to take a horseback ride, want to travel by horse someplace, and get them thinking about what they could do to build up the, the skills base that they have in mind and give them alternatives. I think that's really fundamentally one of my greatest um, complaints about the railroad versus sandbox argument is that a sandbox game master, if he's true to that term, has to become this, a slave in essence to what the players desire. You have to fulfill what they're trying to accomplish as persona by giving them the pieces that they want to pursue. And arguably, I suppose, the Dungeons and Dragons mechanisms might be better aligned with that only because the class limitations, class restrictions, and class requirements, and the structured feat, um, the feats scale, whereas you have to have this, skew, this, fate, th this feat to gain this other feat, that kind of a process builds in a, a ladder, a progression, an advancement course for the players. Unfortunately, because of the capriciousness of the Dungeons and Dragons rules, that's really in the hands of the players anyway, which is, to me, kind of ultimately ironic because a, a game master's predilection to have a story to tell isn't uniform and it isn't ubiquitous any longer. A lot of game masters don't have the acumen or even the desire to guide the story. If they are, for example, I have great groups, I know groups that are four and five players where they are all game masters and each one of them takes a turn game mastering maybe multiple weeks, maybe a single shot, but they rotate who's being the storyteller and they also com communicate with each other on a regular basis about what they want as far as advancements, as far as where they want to go. And therefore the game masters are functionally feeding their own alternate players in the story so that the players are getting what they want. So therefore they will then uh, provide the requisite, uh, the uh, compensatory advancements for the characters when their turned play is on instead of their game mastery. So therefore they're able to get some quid pro quo. Now, Dungeons and Dragons has been around long enough and the m current mechanism has been stable long enough that I can speak with confidence to game masters of the fifth edition to say that if you have not tried your own world creation, your own story development outside of the modules and the product provided by others, there's a whole world of advancement and a whole world of possibilities that are beyond that. So my recommendation is if you are a storyteller and you have done the box set, you've done the one shot, you've done the campaign volume, Take it, even if it took them through six, eight, ten levels of adventuring. Nonetheless, if you haven't created for yourself, you haven't really experienced the true benefits of role playing, uh, for which, unfortunately, alas, I don't believe that Dungeons and Dragons is any longer appropriate or suitable for. And uh, so, what are your thoughts? If if you disagree with me, I'd love to hear your comments below as well as in the chat. I'm. I'm much more of a di dialogue expert than I am in a monologue status, so perhaps something I'm saying or have said uh, causes you to want to engage with me. Please feel free to do so, because I would love to answer any questions you might have as well as have a conversation over these topics rather than 
simply be the broadcaster thereof. Having said that, when you are a storyteller and you are building your own story and you are building with different themes, it's important for you to stay focused on that theme. One of the biggest uh, claims that are made about a Nikos RPG is that the world that I run, the games that I run, are equated to a quicksand-filled sandbox, littered with shiny objects and objectives. And players can look across the panoply of options and choose one or three or 15 and pile them on, on, onto their agenda platter, so to speak. But that the world itself has so much localized communicative draw that if you're not careful, you'll find yourself getting drawn into the local story to the point where you lose sight of the shiny objects of, for which you were searching to the point of them becoming actually irrelevant to the story in which you've gone because although that may have been your focus, it was not your intent. And I think that's really kind of the key here. The storyteller, and the, I'm sorry, the players in the game can have their intent. They can have the things they wish to accomplish. But that has to be within the light of the story that's being offered and the players need to navigate to their objectives through the storyline rather than smashing it head on and comp competing with it. And I think one of the things that I can attribute my longevity as a game master to is that the story development in taking a longer period of time does take a level of dedication from the players that isn't found in the same people that you play uh, in the localized game store on a once in a while basis. The fact that my campaigns are set up so that they run, they, they fire off in sequence every week and the players can dedicate themselves to the course that they're on or even ex explore the other stories that are going on and decide which ones they find appropriate and become a part of, then they become, if you will, the very drivers that keep the story moving forward and therefore taking some of the pressure off of the storyteller and off of the game master because I, I thoroughly enjoy telling a tale that incorporates all the things that my players want from the game, but I also don't want them to disrespect or, dis or ignore the world that's around them. And if you disagree with me, feel free to hop into the chat and, and have that conversation. I'm, I'm open to other positions. Um, as uh, my grandfather would say, yeah, everybody has a right to be wrong. And uh, that doesn't just mean me, but <laughs> that's okay too. Now, it's ironic that telling a long tale really doesn't take uh, as much work I would say as the one shots. And this may be also an area where I will find pushback from players because their argument is that a one shot is, you know, 12 details and three NPCs and, and that's all they've had to develop. Whereas in my case, the NPCs are ages old and I have to reacquire the personality and the, pers and, and the personhood of that NPC to make them useful in the story. But the reality is, is that once you have a resident file of 50 personalities or so, could be more, could be less, that you can drop into when a player wants to interact with an NPC, you've got a whole panoply to draw from. The biggest challenge is making sure you use the same one each time they meet. And so I generally have one or two affectations that I attribute to that NPC so that when he is in the room, then the things that I do, you know, if you notice, I'm, I'm uh, as my, uh, my mentor would say, I'm partially Sicilian because if I don't have my hands moving, you can hardly understand what I'm saying because I speak so much with my hands. But the affectations that I carry out for each persona makes that persona memorable so that the other players will remember, oh, that's the guy that was always pulling on his chin, his chin whiskers. Always, always, always. So then I remember, okay, when I'm doing that persona, then my hands at my chin, and therefore, even if I'm not using the same voice or I've changed my demeanor, 
nonetheless, the one thing that they remember about the NPC is still there. I think that may be also one of the keys to a long-term adventure is that most people's perception of memory is that it is indelible, that once something has happened in your life, you will remember all of the details to it. But in a long tail adventure, you may pass through the same town six months, three years later in real time. It might be three, three years or 25 years in story. Your remembrances of the, of the story and the details, if you're a good note taker, are going to be pretty spot on and you'll be able to draw it back and immediately replay it for the players. But unless the players are also extreme detail note takers, then you could do things like misremember and that mis mismemory becomes the unified and accepted reality. I know I sound like I'm letting things down from behind the curtain and really I am. The one thing about my broadcast is that when I don't have another sp person to speak with, I tend to drift as well. And so my argument about staying on task really comes back to where we are in my storytelling here. And that is, if you have a long story to tell, pace yourself, talk about each part in its turn in a way that becomes memorable for the players because their collective memory becomes the memory of the world and therefore that becomes the, the legacy of the adventure planet or the adventure location that you are playing with. Now, if you like what I'm talking about and would like to hear more, you can check out our channel at Nikos RPG on YouTube as well as uh, subscribe and follow this channel here on Twitch because this is where we do all of our new videos and they are all eventually broadcast on YouTube, usually within a couple of days, but sometimes longer than that. If you f want to know more about the world of Nikos and how you can begin become involved with the process of rolling out the Nikos RPG game, please check out patreon.com slash Nikos, N-Y-C-O-S, like the logo. Or if you want to know any more information about the property as it's available currently, uh, for retail, check out nikosrpg.com, our website, or visit the board game store, Board Game Paradise, on State Street in Redlands, California, as that is our the current singular exclusive retailer for the Nikos RPG property line. And there are a couple of different uh, versions of Dark Shards that are out. We will be uh, doing a pre-release version of the master book in the next uh, couple of weeks or so. So that should be available by the 1st of October. So you can look into that. And if you're interested in pre-orders for the Nikos RPG property, we will be launching our Kickstarter for that probably sometime between October and the 1st of November. I haven't got the exact date, date yet. Having said all that, I'm Jonathan Alvin, and this is Nikos RPG. Uh, if you have any other comments please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section uh, if you catch me while i'm on like this you can definitely put a chat in the chat room and i will respond to that and then finally of course you can get a hold of me uh, at uh, nikosrpg.com or for even more information about the world of nikos just to get an idea of the background behind it check out our um, info page at nikosrpg.info Alrighty, we have reached the end of my first half hour. I don't want you to go through the commercials if we can help it. And I want to thank you for being here for this time. And I will see you in the next show. Remember, we broadcast every morning at 10 a.m. Pacific Time and every night at 11 p.m. Pacific Time. And I do remain on Discord during this time should somebody want to participate. So I will talk to you all later. Have a great evening. See you tomorrow.